all my people they died to wait, to wait. If you really, 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 really think about us, you will realize there ain't no need to fight. Yes, um, introducing this segment, I saw a, B, a black BMW car there, but I'm sure that one we were looking at is not armored. Is not armored, <laughs> by any stretch of imagination, no. Now let's get this show on the road. Uh, despite the raging palaver about the purchase of two armored uh, BMW cars at an, an outrageous amount, according to Nigerians, the Minister of Aviation, uh, Ms. Stella Odua, has left the country. She's actually gone on pilgrimage. But she has left behind a whole trail of questions. Questions, 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 questions. Some of them we're going to attempt to give answers to in the studio this morning. I'm sure you have your own questions at home as well. So you need to stay with us and take part in this conversation from home. Well, to look at this palaver with us this morning, it's my pleasure to welcome um, our former in-house lawyer, former, <laughs> Malaki Ugumadu. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you again after I'm, such a long break. I'm delighted to be here. Good morning, viewers. Welcome. We also have uh, Mr. Bruce Ugiomo, who is a human rights activist. Thank you very much for coming. My pleasure. Then we have Mr. Chris Aligbe, who's an aviation expert. Good morning. Thank you, uh, Alero. A former PR man. Thank you. Still a PR man, I assume. Well, yes. Thank you very much. Good morning and thank good, you for coming. Good morning. Then we have um, another human rights activist, Eneruvie Enakoko. Good morning. Good morning. Thank, thank you. Thank you for joining us this morning. Now, let's go straight to the heart of the problem, or not the problem, the issue. Uh, let me begin with you, sir. Um, when this story broke, the, the reaction was like it was meant to have been a secret. What was your reaction when the, when the stories began to unfold? It's supposed to be a secret. It didn't happen at all, and then it did happen. Nobody has seen the cars. How much were, were How much did the cars cost? Questions. I mean, I just can't stop asking questions, Malaki. On the heels of the contradictory statements from, you know, uh, principal actors or you know uh, members of the agencies that were concerned. I'm talking about those who said vehicles were purchased because uh, aviation is an international industry. They were purchased for expatriates and foreign visitors. Uh, almost in the same breath, we also had <coughs> because of the security threats on the minister. So, so I agree with you. Um, but let me make this point uh, rather painfully. That it also came at a time when we least needed this kind of insult. Nigeria clearly has become a theater of absurdity, one in which even criminal, peculiar people as even, actors. even criminal activities, you know, now assume the garb of uh, comedy and people just say, uh, we're also talking of a country where, uh, like I was telling my uh, colleague, if you hear of the killing of 40 people in the Northeast as of today, it's of no moment. Um, However, let's stay on the issue. I, I think that, you see, nature, they say, has a morbid sense of humor. For as long as they try to make it a secret, for that long, it has continued to be 
a very clear public discourse. And, and I think that they've assisted all of us who are curious and interested in knowing by the way and manner they have also tried to manage their secret. Uh, there's what we call open secret, you know. Um, but the, 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 the drawback, the real flip side of this messy story is that it's happening at a time when there is actually huge case of dissatisfaction, resentment, want, genuine desire of, on the part of the Nigerian people. Uh, it's also happening at a time where, for instance, the critical sector of education, for instance, is told that we can attend to your demands because the country cannot afford the kind of money you are talking about. And I, I have made the point that it, the whole thing is becoming very interesting because some two weeks before that time, even the same minister was celebrated to high heavens regarding her efforts on the reforms and the renovation activities at most uh, airports. Were so, for good reasons? Oh, well, to that extent. And, I mean, there were proper management of that aspect of her activities, too. Okay. So to that extent, you will, at least we, we were treated to uh, the Enugu airport and all that. So um, I, I'm interested. I, I came here with open mind. Uh, knowing that I'm thoroughly embarrassed and demobilized by the kind of stories we hear these days. We're going to deal with it, if you allow me, as issues come up. Okay. Can I just ask Chris Olivia, being an industry expert, I would think you have insight into the goings-on. What's your thought about what happened and all the revelations that we've had recently? Thank you. You know, I, I talk about aviation. I wish you were asking me about aircraft now. Yes. I'll be at home. Uh, I wish uh, because uh, I've never talked about uh, uh, vehicles, whether they're armored or not armored. <laughs> and so you're taking a fish out of water, as it were. But since I want to struggle to get back to water, I'll try to answer uh, what you are. Talking about, you see, the way I see it, I see issues on a larger perspective. One, the issue of the car with all the conflicting uh, stories here and there. I think that the, I think that the, that's why all of us, everybody, today, nobody knows what the truth is. The only thing that appears to be, to be sticking as the truth, is that yes, some cars. Maybe two cars were bought. But every other thing is unknown. That's why I think that the, the right thing to do is what the president has done. Set up a committee. Let us know what, what is happening. Let Nigerians we know. Nigerians must know. We must know what has happened. And so if a committee has been set up, let that committee work and bring out to us what will happen so that we can, we can be categorical in our... In our assessment of what has happened, who is involved, if it is true, who and who, who did what, and why what was done. We need, to, we need to get that clear. I will not take the response of, uh, I mean, there are up to four or five persons who have responded on this issue. You don't know where the actual thing is. So it becomes a little bit difficult for one to go straight and say, yes, yes, yes. The only thing we know that, yes, cars were bought because it's been confirmed. It's been confirmed by virtually everybody who spoke. Mm -hmm. Nobody has said cars were not bought. Okay. okay, but any other thing there, until one gets the information, one will not be able to talk about it. But what worries me, yes. what worries me seriously, is that uh, if we had, in this country, in the aviation sector, if we had systems, then systems would make individuals coming, whether they are civil uh, servants, whether they are uh, public officers, whether they are political officers, we system we force them to conform to it. But because we don't have systems, people make the environment conform to them. That's why my worry is uh, how can we create systems in the industry 